if you notice, there's a game that I haven't been playing. Um, let's see here. I don't think you have been playing DBD. Am I correct with that? That is true, but there's that's an... because I just haven't had the urge to play it. Right. Is it now? I've also heard Overwatch be omitted. That is correct. Okay. Because I am banned forever. Unbelievable. What? <laughs> I am banned for good. Hello and welcome to level 114 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with bold takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy here with my compadre, David. What up? How's your evening going? Uh, it's going uh, pretty good. Uh, packing. We're going to go up north tomorrow for the weekend. So, oh, yeah, fun. Yeah, it'll be my son's first time, so should be good. That's, that's cool. I'm actually packing to go south to Ohio for the weekend. So well, we're we're just splitting, literally. Yeah, we're splitting, we're going opposite directions. I would argue <laughs> you're going to a much better place, right? In the um, woods, environment wise, yeah. But Michigan, yeah, on Michigan the river. woodry, Michigan nature is so great. It is. You know? It's very beautiful. Enjoyable, yeah. Later in the season, you don't need as much deep. You know what I'm saying? You can just kind of yeah. run around and, and and enjoy, not so much worry about the skeetas and all the other vermin and stuff that are out there. It's nice. Yeah. How about you? Um, I'm taking my mom to do a little, to have a little fun at the Sino down there. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, explore that, and then uh, my partner's got some family down there, so we're gonna. Meet up with them, have a fun time there, you know, you know, uh, crack a couple of brews, tell some stories, eat some food, you know. Um, That's a great time in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. Nice little break. Um, ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, we hope that you're making sure you give yourself a moment in the time and a break to do some self care and, and enjoy the world. You know, the world just your life just can't be all work and no play. It can't be all playing no work. That's how you become a crack addict. Yeah. You gotta find a. Whoa. You gotta that, find a nice that jump. <laughs> you gotta find it. It, it jumps. Huh? It jumps, huh? You gotta find a nice. I sure gotta strike a nice balance. Okay. Um, you are right though. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, so so we're into it. We got a couple of great topics for this episode, like we always do. I think we consistently hit great topics, and I'm not biased at all when I say that. So, um, Fire, you know, yeah, before we get to those great topics, though, we're going to always leave with what we the, the topic we love to lead with, and that's talking about the games that we're playing. Um, let's see here. I think last time, um, David, you're kind of off. I think I may be kind of in your boat now in regards to not having a lot of time to play games. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can offer what I've kind of been playing, yeah. I can tell you what I've been watching. Is I've been, which is not playing at all. It's watching. <laughs> it's <laughs> but it is. But I've been watching someone play a game, so it is related. Uh, I've been watching someone, um, someone's, for me, increasingly frustrating let's play series of a game called Big Ambitions. Now, this was a game that was pretty right. popular. I think late last year, or maybe middle to late last year, it was uh, produced by the developer that did this game called Startup Company. It's a business sim, right? And so big, big ambitions is kind of like a life business sim, right? You have to do some things like you have to eat, you have to sleep, you have to maintain happiness, you have to find a place to live, but you also get to start businesses. You get to start up businesses, make money, optimize those businesses, build build a chain of businesses. You can build corporations, so on and so forth, right? So, right. you know, I've talked before the game I have 250 plus hours in Software Inc. It That's is exactly a, what I was thinking. It's adjacent to that, right? So. I've been watching it, seeing how this person is doing everything wrong and thinking about how I would do it. Um, and so I'm pretty sure that I'm going to very soon probably acquire this game. Uh, keep in mind that I also did acquire Project Hospital because I was watching someone else in the Let's Play of that. You did. Okay. Have not played okay. it yet. I have quite a few games I've acquired from Let's Plays that I have not played yet. And I'm always super geek. Like one of these days, I'm going to have like three days off. And I'm just going to freaking rip 10 or 12 hours into it. 
you gotta and then I them let's plays, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then I don't. Look, this is how you actually play the game. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, this very person is just being a moron. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so I'm like, yeah, I do that way better. So the, uh, what I've actually been playing though, I've played a little bit, a very little bit, of Expeditions Rome. Um, and let's okay. see here. I did play a decent amount of EA Sports College Football 25. I was able to take Very Missouri real. to the playoffs, the college playoffs. Um, I had to go through several teams. Uh, in my in my season, I was the, I, I had two losses. So the both losses were to Georgia, which is like the best team in the game. Um, and then when I finally went through the conference playoff or the, or the championship playoff, I beat all my teams, and the team I had to beat to win the championship was Georgia. So third time uh, was a charm. I finally oh. knocked them off. Yeah. Okay. So hey. yeah. Now it's not great for everyone because I'm Missouri, and that's technically another SEC team. If you're in the conference stuff like that, so um, the SEC wins another championship. But uh, I was able to do that, so that was cool. And so now I'm into my next year, and I've said before that I think I might have this for a little bit, and then I'll probably get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I got done, I felt that. I'm like, okay, I don't think I have much more of me of this to play, which I've never felt that with, with really? NCAA football 14. Yeah, but I was kind of like, all right, I, I get it. Um, <laughs> I got it. You know, like it. it's got it. I got it. Good. It's enough. Uh, I'll trade it away and get credit and get other games. Maybe I'll get uh, Black Myth Wukong or something. Um, but I played a little bit of that, a little bit of Expeditions Rome. So I'm still in the same two games. Um, I have been doing my mobile gaming a little bit more. I've been playing some of these bad mobile games, um, trying to pass time. I think one I've been playing the most is oh, Battle. What is this called? Battle Battle Z. It's basically kind of like an idle battler, you know, one of those types of games. Um, oh, so yeah. I've been playing a little bit of that. Uh, I'm not into it. Actually, I am kind of into it, like I was Eat Venture at one point, where I was super into Eat Venture. Uh, but uh, I've been into it pretty good for maybe about a week or so. Um, but I mean, that'll, it's already starting to wane. Again, it won't, it, it doesn't have its hooks in me as deep as Eat Venture did, but, uh, I've been playing that a little bit too. So that's pretty much been it for my playing so far. Nice. Yeah. How about yourself? Um, let's see. Uh, I started playing the finals. Really? So it's, it's actually a pretty fun game. It, you'd be surprised like you'd think there'd be game modes that you, they're just running out of ideas at this point, you know. There's so yeah. many FPS games, but no, they they have quite a few different ones, and they're all original. There's like there's a cash out one, and there's like a point one that's different than like Domination or King of the Hill, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's the graphics are good, the gameplay is good. It's really different to get used to though because yeah people you, i don't know what it's called but like there's a lot of longevity when you start getting shot like you're not just dying instantly yeah like even just starting this game like i've been turning on people and killing them before they killed me yeah i, I forgot it, i forgot what that's called something like time to death or some something something like that, like that. yeah there's yeah. like a yeah ttd time to death i think so you might yeah. be right um there's destruction in this game. So like the buildings mm-hmm. are collapsing, the roofs are falling through. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really fun. And it's like a, it's a game show. So yeah. you have like these announcers, like uh, the team names are just crazy. I can't remember any of them, but like, like, Oh, they're back in. Like if you eliminate the entire team, they're like dead for 30 seconds. Oh, okay. So like they, that can really set the game if you're eliminated or not. Yeah. But, um, playing apex mostly with my son he's getting better okay now he's he's getting some game sense now he's knowing to hide behind the walls more often and he's taking shots that he knows he can take Mm -hmm. so there's there's been a few games where he's helped me i've helped him we've had one there was one game we were fighting for kill leader oh yeah like i would get seven and he would get eight and i would get not like it was that was a crazy game like we yeah. haven't had a game like that in a while but it was insane just going back and forth as kill leader <laughs> and it's just really it's really like awesome just to see him doing that yeah you know but uh 
I've been playing a lot of Royal Match. I kind of have a problem. Like, that's the game I go to when I know I only have, like, a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I try to play TFT as much as I can, which I, I have played quite a bit of that. But that's, like, a 45-minute dedication. Mm. And you need to not be doing anything. Yeah. So I, I'm on level 8,000. Of Royal, Royal Match? Match? Yeah. Okay. okay. It's crazy. Okay. And there's only 9,101. So I'm getting up yeah. there. But, uh... If you notice, there's a game that I haven't been playing. Um, let's see here. I don't think you have been playing DBD. Am I correct with that? That is true, but there's that's an... because I just haven't had the urge to play it. Right. Is it now? I've also heard Overwatch be omitted. That is correct. Okay. Because I am banned forever. Unbelievable. What? <laughs> I am banned for good. That's 3,100 hours gone. Unbelievable. What happened? I have no idea. Like, the the reporting system is pretty much automated at this point. Okay. So you can't even really fight anything. Like, people can just report you because you don't play a character they don't want, they want you to play. Yeah. Like, I'm not good Mercy, dude. I'm not switching the Mercy to pocket you. I'm just going to keep dying. Right. Or, you know, if if the, you lose, you know, they always blame the tank. And when I'm in roll queue, I'm mostly always the tank because that's the fastest queue time. So, I I don't know. I guess. And is this good night, like, Overwatch. And do they do the thing where it's like, I know some places it's, it's just account bans. Or are there bans tagging your ip so it's like, just you an account but i okay. your accounts for blizzard they're connected to phone numbers oh, and i can't okay. make another account with the same phone number right right and i've tried doing the like a google phone number and stuff yeah but it, it it doesn't accept those it doesn't no oh, man, that is insane yeah like you said how much how much with 3100 hours yeah and they're just like, hey, man, we, we, I don't know. I, I guess, so you know what? Because we kind of remarked, hey, it's, you, it seems like you've been okay there for a little bit. Maybe, the, maybe like Blizzard got months. rid of this hater. Yeah. yeah. And this hater was in the background scheming some diabolical ish. To yeah, they're like, just wait for it. Yeah. And what's really funny is I was never banned on Overwatch 1, not once. Yeah. Overwatch yeah, 2 came weird. out, and it was just boom, boom, boom. Man. That's weird. Well, um, I mean, Man, you that's know. That's what I have and have not been playing. I mean, obviously, I feel like we're going to have to explore a petition.org type of thing here where <laughs> we're like, this is unfair. For one, give us a reason. This feels, um, you know, very don't know what's happening here why why this is happening what's yeah, going they don't, on they don't even give you the reason it just says you violated our terms unbelievable wow. by what yeah. what exactly did i do and exactly like you just violated our terms oh man oh, okay i guess i can't believe it well i mean you know you pretty that's is that's the only way of which you really engage in any uh activision blizzard content i feel like right because you yeah. don't really play the newer call of duties and stuff right no so i mean the one way they could have got you and got money from you they blew it so i mean you know they did it's their loss it's their loss unfortunate though because like you said 3100 hours into something like obviously you enjoyed playing it um, right and then just to have some freaking uh some freaking mook somewhere just say hey we're not gonna you know let this guy have any we're not gonna we're going to ban because oh why why do you why do you want to ban specifically terms? It's the terms. <laughs> it's it, what uh, what terms? The terms that we have. It's the terms. Um, man, it's terrible. Well, I guess that's. I guess that's not. You'll have to find. Is that is that so? Is that why you're kind of trying the finals? Is that, you're seeing the finals? I, yeah, take that? that's exactly why. I was like, yeah. well, might as well give this a shot. So now you're just going to be exploring a bunch of these other. 
either hero shooters or maybe uh uh what is it called battle royales and seeing if there's a possible replacement something that scratches the itch of an overwatch yeah oh Are you I, gonna... also, I played aero gpx too Ah uh, yes i'm on the, i'm on the third out of the four segments so i'm getting there okay Okay. Okay. Would you say that you're prop? Would you say you're like five plus hours in gameplay on that? Or yeah, I, actually, um, I can check that right now. I am at three and a half. Okay. Cool. I'll take it. So that's it's 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 earned some t- it's earned some of your time consistently. Which yeah, is, which it it passed the two hour mark. Like for it some did. reason, that is the catch all. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I'm, I'm actually curious now what's going to end up taking the place of Overwatch. There's so many options. Yeah, you too. played, uh, you played Valorant for a little, right? You didn't, you didn't really get I into did. That, did so you? the the hard thing about Valorant is I can't deal with the stop and shooting, mm. like in Counter Strike. I was mm-hmm. never good at that one either. I just, I just can't do it. What about something like? I mean, it's not the same thing. But what about something like an Escape from Tarkov? Is that something that scratches an itch or no? No, that's more like a that's kind of like Valheim, right? No, I think it's more of like an extraction shooter. If I if that makes kind of makes oh, sense. Oh, is it okay? Yeah. I, I might have to look into it. Yeah. Huh, I'm I'm curious what takes it. It might be the finals because I am quite a fan of that one. Yeah, the, I, I've, I've heard oh, good things about the finals. I already have four hours into it, so. Oh, in the finals? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That might end up doing it. Yeah, I've heard really good things about it. Okay. What is that, bro? Breaking some interesting news, little little interesting news nugget there. I can't believe I can't believe they did that. That's I, I that's know. insane. That is insane. Maybe it was one door closing to open up another door. Possibly another place that more deserves your money. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to th- I'm trying to think though. Like if I got like. If they were like, you can't play... If I got banned from playing like an Elder Scrolls game or something, I would be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, I am, but at the end of the day, it's like, you know what? I should do something else anyways, whatever. Yeah. I'm okay opportunity to explore different things. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, wow. What a, what a, what a interesting and newsworthy what we've been playing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that... When you said banned... I was like, oh, there's no way you got banned again. But then you said banned for life. I'm like, what? Yeah, permanent. Man. Insane. I know. Well, I mean, with that, I don't know how we're going to overcome that. I'm kind of shook. I don't know how I'm going to make it through. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm more, sh- I appear more shook than you are. I've had I'm some time sh- to deal with it. It happened uh, during the weekend. Okay, okay, that's true. <laughs> I was at a festival and I was like, notification popped up it was an email that's not you've a been banned for good yeah. oh okay oh man uh, okay well i'm gonna try to compose myself so we can move on to our other segments here um and so first first topic i'll take first topic here uh is a level of interest so um recently i don't know how long ago i don't know if the i don't know if the release was yesterday or the day before we're recording this but whenever it goes out it will still have been somewhat recent there was the release of black myth wukong i don't uh, know yes, yes if anyone if you're anyone familiar about this but essentially if i say the word monkey man this is the game it is a so good so <laughs> it's so good uh, apparently dragon ball is based <laughs> off of wukong Yes. Yes. So the cool thing about Wukong, and I'll admit that, I mean, I have a, I have in my nightstand a book that I bought that covers, I think, a thousand and one uh, Chinese uh, stories and mythologies that I have not had a chance to open or read yet. And I don't know if Wukong is, it, it feels like it might be part of the, the mythos of like, of China, but the story of Wukong is, it seems awesome. I've gotten a rundown of what it is. And this game is apparently covering part of, uh, of that, of that story. Um, it seems to be an action adventure game. It looks like a from software type of game. From what I've heard, the software the the combat isn't as difficult as something like a from software game, but it has yeah. that it has that vibe and energy. 
So what's been going around, a lot of people are freaking really impressed by the intro sequence or intro into the first boss battle or first level of Wukong. Wukong like jumps off a mountain and then rides a Nimbus cloud towards a gaggle of gods that are like 78 billion feet yards, miles tall, and in lands and it's like, hey, I've got a staff here and I'm going to fight everybody. And uh, one of the gods looks like the troll from Valheim. I don't, it, it may be an accurate representation of what they look like from the stories, but I'm just telling you what they look like to me. I saw that troll and I said Valheim. <laughs> so, so a lot of people have been really increased in, impressed because it's an awesome, it sets up so much. It, it kind of feels like, um, for instance, like, you know, you're in you do music production, really into that. You know how uh, a really great album is set up by the first track. The first track is supposed to set the tone for the album. Mm -hmm. Well, in a game you if you, that has boss battles, the first one needs to set the tone for the rest of the game, right? I one that I think of that's great that people talk about is um, the fight that you have at the beginning of God of War 2016. That first boss battle sets the tone and the atmosphere for the rest of the game. And this is a great tone setter for that game. But it had me thinking about Hmm, I wonder if there's been games that I've played before where either the intro to a chapter or a level or a boss battle was, for one, just utterly incredible to me, just left me completely awestruck, uh, but also, you know, felt like maybe it was a good tone setter or something like that, but more so just like, what's some really cool, awesome intros to gaming levels or chapters or bosses or stories that we kind of that we've remembered some of our favorites from the past some games that we've played okay um the one that i can offer that i think of immediately would be the opening sequence to uh now let me make sure i get it because i want to get the whole name of the game correct so be, okay uh, cool produce. so the first one that i think of was the intro to uncharted 2 among thieves it opens with Nathan Drake on a train and the train has been like, it's on like its side and it's dangling off the edge of a mountain and you have to climb up the, the train and you have to avoid getting hit by different things. I think they're QTEs and stuff like that. And just how it sets up. I remember that the whole sequence happens in a cutscene, and then he's like hanging on the train. And I was like, Holy crap. Like, what is he going to do? And then I'm watching and he's still hanging there. And then I just like kind of tap my thumbstick and then he moves. I'm like, oh, it's my turn. <laughs> I was just so enthralled by the beginning of it that I'm like, oh, well, that was freaking awesome. And now I can actually get the control of my person now in this whole sequence. So that was one I really think of. And that was kind of like, you know, when, so when Sony kind of got that, started to build this representation of having these really great single player experiences. I think that was one game that kind of helped build the story of that. Uh, and in particular, I think when you have great sequences like that to open games, even that that's pretty awesome. So that's one that, that comes to mind right away was uh, uncharted Two. You know, I can't remember at all the sequence like that, but I know I've done the same exact thing. Sitting yeah. there waiting for the story to continue and Oh, it, Oh, I'm supposed to do it. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, one for me would be it's more it's an opener for the game itself, but it really set the tone of what you're gonna have to be doing for the rest of the game, mm -hmm. and it's the uh opening to Resident Evil Two. Ah, uh, like yeah. more so than any of the openings for mm -hmm. three. Doesn't doesn't matter. I think two has the biggest impact of what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, you have this rookie officer has no idea what's going on in the city he just got to, and you have the Claire looking for her brother, and just the turn of events and everything, and the huge semi truck blowing up and separating, mm -hmm. and it's it's just like okay, okay, so this is how it's going to be. I thought I had a teammate. I don't. Right. And I got these zombies everywhere, and it just like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, man. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of insane how it starts. It's, it's, it is. And it, it kind of like, I think I remember one time I played it. Now, were you, you're talking, I mean, obviously you're talking about like the, like the original, right? Yeah. And, and so, the, the remake, they redid it a little bit. Redid it a little bit. Yeah. I remember actually get, like getting caught off guard by the zombies coming at me. When I was doing something one time, I was looking away and I was doing something. I'm like, because I'm just expecting it's whatever, this game opening sequence, whatever, yada, yada, yada. And I remember looking around and doing something and then I looked back up and the zombie was right there and it was like, oh, and I was like, ah. <laughs> and, I grabbed, <laughs> and I grabbed my controller and started to shoot at it. I was like, oh, God. Yeah. But that whole thing, yeah, then, yeah, that whole sequence is great. And a great, like you said, a great mood setter for the rest of that game. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, the next one, again, I will say it's an opening sequence for a game. Um, and like we have talked about, it, again, it could be sequences, chapters, whatever, whatever. Just kind of openings or introducing segments of a game. Right. Obviously, it is one of the most famous ones of all time. It is one of the most memed ones all the time. Everybody knows it, and you love it. It is the opening to Skyrim. When you're on the cart with the with the people, when you're on the cart yes. with Stormcloak, and you're going, and you're about to get your head chopped off, and then the freaking dragon, just you hear it, and then it flies over. And then it's like, oh my god! And you're you're running from your life, and it has this whole sequence. What an awesome tone setter! Um, and it just has a it, it encapsulates everything in kind of the weird quirkiness of a Bethesda game. I mean, you've seen mm -hmm. it modded. Obviously, I think there's the infamous mod where someone replaces the dragon with Macho Man Randy Savage. Uh, and there's so <laughs> many other modifications people have done to that level and to that sequence. It's great. Um, I know in later mods, they've introduced things like alternate starts where you can start someplace else other than that sequence. And I've done that a couple of times, but most of the time when I'm doing a, a new run of the game, I got to go there. Like, how can you not start there? You know, it, it again, con so continues. Cheap. It continues the tradition of every Elder Scrolls game, which is you start in jail. You don't, I do, you don't know how you got there, but you start in Morrowind, you start in jail. Okay. In, in Oblivion, you start in jail. And in Skyrim, you are imprisoned and about to be executed for crossing into Skyrim for some reason. They don't trust you. So that's another great one. Uh, one that I think everybody loves. And again, it's been mean to death, but that's right. another great, great intro, I think, for a game. <laughs> And you, you saying the uh, you just, you know, start in jail and everything like that. It just remind me of that SNL skit. I can't remember the actor's name, but he's acting like uh, the Cuban oh, yeah. minister Fred or Armisen? whatever. He's like directly to jail, directly yeah. to jail. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, you, uh, that's funny. You overcook fish right to jail. You undercook chicken right to jail. <laughs> yeah. So good. I'm going to have to watch it when we're done recording now. That I mean, he, he literally that scene could be just. You know, you uh, you you go to you go to play Morrowind straight to jail. Straight you go to, to play Oblivion right to jail, right to jail. Right to you jail. Know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, whenever Elder Scrolls Six comes out, you got to start in jail. I I don't I don't they gotta I don't want I don't want them to break that at all. That has to be the motif. You just always start in prison. Uh, for me. My next one, I'm going to go with a, a boss introduction, and it's mm. fairly simple, okay? Mm -hmm. But when you hear this boss's name, you're going to understand why, okay? You'll probably okay. remember the introduction. Okay. Lu Bu. Ah, yes. Dynasty yeah, yeah. Warriors 4. Yes, yes, yes. If anybody remembers anything from Dynasty Warriors, it's Lubu. It's Lubu. Lubu is such a is such, he's such a bastard. And yeah. the and the and the thing is, it's like Lubu is a good guy, right? I, honestly, I think I, I think don't historically remember. he's a good guy, right? But the games make him feel like a bad guy every time. And they and like an over like like an overly powerful bad guy like Lubu is like in defeat. I always just ran from him. I couldn't yeah. really defeat him. Yes, yes, you would just run from him. You would just run from him. You would spend the rest of that level. Everyone else, you're like, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Lubu gets a little closer. Like, not, it's Mr. X. It's Mr. X before Mr. X in some senses, right? 
where you're just running the whole time whenever Lubu's near. Oh, yeah, that's a great one, too. Yeah. Simple, elegant. Yeah. Yep, very simple. I just, I watched the intro real quick just to see if it, you know, like, would mm-hmm. count. And it's simple. It's like, oh, it's Lubu. He's here to destroy us. Yeah. And that was it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think. So I think I've got two more. And um, unfortunately, I think three of the four are going to be PlayStation games. I don't know how it works out that way, but it has. Uh, the next one for a more recent one, I guess. I've talked before. I don't have a lot of experience with the Final Fantasy games. Mm-hmm. I've played a little bit of 10 because I had a demo of it that I didn't remember I actually played until about 15 years later. I remember that I actually played the demo of it. And then I have played and beat Final Fantasy 16 and I own and have not played Final Fantasy 15. So obviously playing 16, it's from 16. And I talked before about there's a bunch of different great boss battles in that game. Right. But the one that I enjoyed the most was the fight with Titan. In regards to, and I forgot the name of the actual, of the regular character who, that's his icon. Mm-hmm. But uh, Titan is the icon, but that whole boss battle was so cool because it's like Titan's like this huge giant. And you're like at some point, um, you know, fighting him, like like running up his arm and fighting him and having to jump all over the place. And it's taking place super high in the sky and he's just massive and all these different things, and it was just an awesome, awesome boss battle. That just really that impressed sounds me from, like fun. from just yeah, from just a visual standpoint, then obviously a mechanical standpoint. It was really awesome. Um, so I had to give it to Final of all the boss battles. The the, I, the Titan one I believe is maybe halfway through as far as far as boss battles. There are other bosses that are stronger and bigger. Like I said at the end, you're you're fighting a dragon in space. I think. And that Dang. felt stupid. That felt stupid to me. Like, why am I in space? <laughs> like, but but the Titan one felt a lot more grounded, and that's what I one of the things I appreciated about it. And it was just just awesome, you know, because he it turns into Titan. He's super huge, and your guy's like, what? You know, it's just awesome. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's that's cool. That sounds like a fun time. Mm-hmm. I remember fight fighting some of the bosses in Final Fantasy X. There yeah, a, that's. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, <laughs> let's see another one. Okay, so it's pretty much the beginning of the game, but there's okay. quite a, a little. You know, there's a little bit before, mm-hmm. but uh, the sequence in The Last of Us, where. Mm-hmm. After they, you know, they trash and they're looking and they're running away and he runs into that soldier. Yes. Yeah. Like that was just such a. Very emotional, very like that just instantly brought you in and you just felt everything. And you're talking you're talking about the um, with his daughter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Because that. I mean, look, the, the beginning sequence, and you're talking about the beginning sequence, the ending sequence of that game, they're both, like to me, equally just super on par in regards mm-hmm. to how that whole thing happens. Uh, but yeah, that you're talking that whole intro sequence, that whole thing, and especially that part with the daughter, like, man, that's, like you said, great tone. It's a great tone setter. Yeah, and like, you, you know how he feels, and then it says 100%. 20 years later, or yes. however many years later, and like, He's had to live with it, and yes, that's it, rough. It grounds everything, and it makes you like everything that Joel does makes sense because you have right. that background and that under and understanding of that. Based upon, we don't need a bunch of exposition about everything. We've got that scene, we've got that sequence, and right. yeah, and I, it, I think it also. I think that sequence also is just because there's playable sections of it, right? So it's a long sequence, but I would count all of that. Yeah. It being the intro sequence. That sequence also does a great job, not only of the emotional standpoint and Joel's standpoint from like that that whole thing with his daughter, but also it does a great job of kind of painting the picture of what it would maybe feel like if essentially a zombie apocalypse happened 
Like there's just a bunch. It's, mm-hmm. It just feels. It's at night. It, everything just kind of feels weird. Things are just kind of happening. You don't know what's going on, right? And there's like a little bit of just uneasiness in that whole sequence when you're going through it. And that's another great thing about it. Is kind of kind of how it communicates that as well. You know. Yeah, it's it's just so good. I think that's what really brought me into that game and played it so many times and love it as much as I do. Mm-hmm. I wonder when they'll make a part three or if they ever will. I hope. I feel like they'd have to. I think the this, this story is set up for a third one. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. It's been a minute since I've played it. Yeah, um, so let's see here. I got one more, and this is just something that, that flashed into mind. I'm trying to make sure that I have the actual, yeah, the actual person's name right. So uh, just sequence to a boss battle. Maybe not even a sequence to a boss battle, but the introduction to the boss of a game. This is okay. Sons of Liberty, or Metal Gear Solid Sons of Liberty. So playing on PlayStation, the one of the protagonists, or not protagonists, antagonists, the enemy, is a character named Sergei Gerlokovich. Russian, obviously Russian guy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, former commanding officer of the Spetnaz, which is basically, I guess, Russian Central Intelligence. Um, and you, I remember there's a scene where he's either caught or something's going on. And he's surrounded by, like, a bunch of people. And he takes out a revolver. And he, like, super, like, quickly, like, spins around and fires it off blindly. And shoots and kills, like, six people surrounding him or something. And gets out of room. Like, that's how you're introduced to his character. And you're like, I'm going to eventually have to find a way to kill him. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, right now, I'm, I'm shooting people with tranquilizers and stuffing them into lockers. I don't know how I'm going to graduate eventually to kill a guy that can kill six people with six bullets from a revolver. So, um, but I just remember I, that, that sequence always stuck with me. It's like, man, this guy is bad ass. And I don't know how I'm going to freaking get over this. I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm going to try. I will try. Right. Eventually I did. I think. I think. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I guess I could, I have one more. And it's kind of, you know, going back to what I just said, but Last of Us Part 2, with the whole Abby Joel moment. Yes. You know, very unexpected. Really sets the tone for us of the game. Really puts you in multiple shoes. And it's just... Mm-hmm. That that you know that's a big part when it's that singular moment that divides the fandom of part two. Right. Well, it seemed like just a, a general just division of the fan base of just like yeah. people that are you know just yeah hundred percent like yeah and that's that's more so that is that's an introduction to her character. Mm-hmm. And the how you have to navigate your relationship as the player with her as a character is very interesting. Yeah. It's one of the things I thought was, of all the gripes I gave that game, that was one thing I thought that was really interesting and really cool. Me too. Now, also, like, yeah, it, I, yeah. Go, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I also don't know how much, I, I, look, the game's been out for like four or five years. I don't know how much we want to reveal. Um, right. Because they also have the season two coming out of the show eventually and different things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you watch but, season one? Oh, yeah. Oh, so good. So good. So good. The uh, chapter, what was it? I'm going to look it up. Uh, the cha- I can't remember the chapter. But um, it was named after the chapter from the first one, obviously, when you're with, is it Henry? Oh, yeah, Henry. Yeah. The, the chapter with Henry? Brother. Yes, man. It was as heartbreaking in the show as it is in the in the in the in the game. It, it is, is it I, is devastating. I, on my uh on my plane trip from Vietnam, they had episodes five and six. Why okay. only five and six? I don't know. It's but weird. that yeah. was one of the episodes. Ah, okay. And I just it, it hit so hard. Mm-hmm. It does. 
It's and terrible. It, uh, very good voice acting and very good acting. Yes. Yes, 100%. Yes. Yeah. Um, man, yeah, so it's so great. Obviously, there's a bunch of things done exceptionally in The Last of Us in various, both in one and two. Um, but one especially for me. And that's, yeah. But uh, but uh, that that whole sequence in two, you're talking about the introduction of Abby. Because it's how she's introduced. Yeah, and like, if... It's a crazy introduction. <laughs> yeah, and if you're capable of putting yourself in multiple pairs of shoes, and now there's mm-hmm. not like a who's right or you know, who's wrong, or you know, like you're just, you're seeing both aspects of both of them are right in a sense, but both of them are wrong in a sense. And you just, mm-hmm. you know, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, Joel, and, you know, Joel mm-hmm. is wrong, so I don't like this game. And it's like every... This point of views, man. Well, I I definitely think that um Abby's wrong is more wrong than Joel's wrong. Um, but <laughs> that's obvious bias coming through. Um, right. Yeah, I believe that uh, one person had well, they both had agency, but um, one was trying to. I guess protect someone else to protect someone else's agency, even mm-hmm. though in his actions he removed it. Um, and the other person wasn't trying to protect anyone's agency except their own. So you are right. You're correct. That's what I would say. Both are wrong, sure. I mean, whatever. But you know. <laughs> that's my boy Joel. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go against my boy Joel. Hey, he's he's good. And now that the fact that Joel is, pay, is played by Pedro Pascal, I'm not going against Pedro Pascal. I don't. I don't know. Absolutely not. I don't know who needs to hear that. You're wrong. Love that guy. Okay. Yeah. Do you that's have it any for more? my topic though? No, oh, that's it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, for mine, it's a contest, but I guess it's not a contest. If you have like a top two, maybe three, mm. but. Which genre of video games do you think has the best kind of music? This is, uh, I think, a very good question. It's something to think about. Now, before I, before, if, I, if you would allow me, before I do the top, or I start naming my one or two that I believe has the best music, mm-hmm. I kind of mentioned this earlier before we recorded. Can I say the one I know that has the worst music? Yes. Okay, sports games. Sports games... Not even, not even have to think about it. Have the worst music of all video games, no matter what. Football, terrible music. Basketball, it's, it's all terrible. All of it's terrible. It's all terrible. And even when you go back to some of the games that had great music. So, so, so one sports game that had great music um, was, we have to go way back. I would say NBA, NBA Street Volume 2. I was going to say, I think, I was going to say, I think there's one exception. Yeah, I would say, and, but here it's, I I think if you took the, the game soundtracks of games of other great games and it's in that same era and Mm -hmm. stacked it up against NBA street volume twos, the NBA streets volume twos would still pale. It would still not be as good. I get you. But a sports ones, that's the one that we can refer to. Besides that, it's not that they're bad. It's that they're abhorrently terrible. They're just terrible. <laughs> just, I can't stress enough how like bad. You give it like a lick of some gratitude and you no, just dig it I, deeper. I can't stress how bad sports video games music are. Now, now with that out the way, um, one genre that I think has great music that I've learned, that I've come to learn to appreciate more are puzzle games. Oh, that's a good one. I think puzzle games have really good music. And again, it's because you're doing something that exercises the brain in a certain way. Mm-hmm. I think you need to have compelling music to keep interest and to also like keep people focused and also not have it be too distracting where it kind of distracts people from being able to focus on the puzzles. So I think right. they strike a really good balance and I think they're really they're really great. And I know we've talked before about how like Tetris Oh my god, I was bangers. about to bring that up. I was waiting yeah. for you to finish talking. I was straight, like, we've brought it up before. Tetris, yeah. t- Tetris has an absolute fire track. 
mm-hmm. one song, but yes, <laughs> that's it's all it needed. Song. It's all yes. it needed. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, for me, it's not my favorite song. That's from a different genre, but I feel like side scrollers have just uh, yeah. an amazing soundtracks. Yeah. Like if you just go back to when like that's all we really had. Mm-hmm. You know, we had you know, Mario, mm-hmm. Sonic, Mega Man. Oh yeah. You know, even Metroid. Oh yeah. I mean, we're talking about for all of all those. Now they've done my man Mega Man dirty. But of all those, Mega Man may have the most slappers. I mean, they got some all straight the themes. slappers in Mega Man. Yeah. Yeah, all the sure. different uh different zones mm-hmm. in Sonic. Oh god, yeah. You just what is that? it's that's what is hard that? to top. Freaking uh freaking casino night in Sonic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man, you cannot beat that. Casino yeah. uh the oil rig. I don't remember mm-hmm. which Sonic one that is, but the oil rig was I loved that one. Mm-hmm. And then just just even when like you're in trouble when you're drowning you know you get you're like no no you start freaking out like mario when you have the star like it like all of it is great not even just the music in the background and that's i'm even thinking i feel like that's so like another one i was thinking of was like um like golden axe banger Golden Axe is banger. Um, Streets of Rage had some bangers, but that was going to even say like that's kind. I feel like that's kind of maintained even to more modern side scrollers. So I think of like an Ori, which doesn't have like bangers per se, but mm-hmm. the music is exceptional in something like Ori or like um, um, again, it doesn't have a lot of music, but it has some, and the touch of it is really great. It lends to the atmosphere of a game of something like Hollow Knight, right? Like, kind of has a little bit of that as well. So right. I feel like, yeah, I feel like side scroller, particular kind of games like that, low key, really good music. Is it, is Undertale side scroller? Um, I would. I've only seen some clips. I don't. So I don't think know it's... for sure. Yeah, I don't think it's a side scroller. I think it's more okay. of kind of like a like kind of like pixelated. Um, I, I I think of like not definitely obviously not the same game mechanics, but I think of like a Stardew Valley ish type of thing with more so Undertale. You know, got it. Yeah. Um, I know there's yeah. a lot of fans for that music too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I've mentioned before that I think another genre that always has great music is going to be strategy games. Uh, I can lend to be more specific in that, though, and where I can specify grand strategy games. So, I mean, you know, technically something like a civilization is like a 4X, but I think mm-hmm. of something, something maybe like 4X strategy and grand strategy games. So something like Civilization, Crusader Kings, uh, Europa Universalis. Like these kind of like really epic sweeping games. You even have some other ones made by companies like Humankind is one. Um, and then what was the other one? I forgot. There was another one recently that came out. They all have really great music. It's usually always very eclectic culturally because these are games that explore different social, political, cultural domains and realms. Right. Um, so it's it, they're always great music and it's always super super awesome as far as the audio quality which again i feel like you have to because if you're going to jump into a game of civilization one turn can take you 35 minutes and this game is supposed to in totality be about 2000 to 3000 turns so it's going to take a long time to get through a game we got to have music that keeps you interested i like how they they diversify so. the music not only by culture not only by like um you know like the area of the world but then also by age right so you're ancient Age has certain music that's different than your industrial age or your modern age or your space age, right? So that even even changes there. It's just a lot of music that's great, that's high quality. Um, they recently, I think, released the gameplay trailer for Civilization Seven. Civilization Seven is on the horizon. Oh, uh, I can't okay. remember. I can't remember who they hired to narrate for Civ Seven. Civ Six is narrated by Sean Bean. 
and it is glorious. That is amazing. I had no idea. That's right. For several years, Civ Six players have had the the pleasure of having uh, Ned Stark uh, narrate whenever they do things or narrate the game. So it's completely awesome. And again, music is great. It's a great part of it. Good. Yeah. I mean, you're right. You, you kind of, you need something to help you stay focused and not yeah. also drive you crazy. A hundred percent. These are long, super long playthroughs. You're talking about possibly hundreds of hours, at least let's say 40 to 50 hours, possibly for a playthrough of a game. Right. For a playthrough, if you want to play one of every leader in civilization, at least I think like regular base game, I think there's like 14 leaders. So right. if every playthrough of a game is 50, 60 hours and you want to play every leader, you take that, you times it by 14. I mean, that's hundreds. Cl- close in on thousands of hours. You've got to right. have music for that. And the music they make is not only just good, it's great. <laughs> like a an advertisement yeah everybody go out there and buy civilization i mean five really good i think they start with five i don't i don't don't know if six is for everyone let's see what they do with seven i've got to do more research on seven yeah yeah i hope they uh, hope it does well um another i i'm gonna i might be biased but I'm going to go with uh, horror games. Yes. It really set the mood. Mm-hmm. You know, like when you're in the safe rooms in Resident Evil, mm-hmm. it's nice and calming. But in any of the horror games, when you're like being chased or like in one of a, a, a fight with something, like it, the, mu- the music is very like erratic and like scary and like keeps the blood flowing mm-hmm. while you're trapping yourself fighting these monsters. Mm-hmm. Very, oh, yeah, 100%. very tonal music in horror, and I think that's why I like it so much. Yeah, I would say even like I don't consider it a horror game, but it's definitely going for an. Uns- I think it's adjacent. What I think of games like two games I've I've talked about as far as um, Limbo and Inside, right? Um, mm-hmm. There's some dark elements to it. I don't know if I would say they're technically straight up horror. But I think the horror also is very restrained with how it uses music. And that helps build up and make it like more intense when there is music that's that's actually playing. When it crescendos because there's danger or something like that, you know, um, is is really awesome. But yeah, the music for horror games, I think even the one we hated, the medium, which we all hated, music wasn't terrible. It wasn't it wasn't spectacular, but it wasn't terrible. And I think of like other games that are probably other games that, that that are out there as far as horror games, they usually have some really good music that goes along with them to keep that atmosphere up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like horror games probably don't get as much credit as they should for the music they have. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't help that people who are scared easily or don't want to be scared, just stay away from the games uh huh. It's not too often people listen to soundtracks of games they're never gonna play. Yeah, that's that's true. That's that's yeah, true. But I mean, there's enough people that's playing them. I mean, again, you said like we refer to like Resident Evil as super huge. Um, mm-hmm. Silent Hill was is decently huge, mm-hmm. right? And you have some other horror games out there that are you know. I, I feel like it's, I always feel like it ebbs and flows too. Like sometimes horror is really popular and then it's not. So, you know, yeah. I guess it kind of depends on that as well. Popularity um, helps. Did you have any other ones though in mind? Um, I don't, not really. I don't play yeah. too many, but I just have to like shout out to The Last of Us again. Just that main theme where you're just on the home page or whatever it's called, just mm-hmm. at the window and it's just playing that song. I could listen to that song forever. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love that song. Yeah. Yeah, I would, um, if we're doing shout outs, then for, I would say for just a particular song, because I think most of the music is pretty run of the mill. 
is, and obviously everyone loves it, I think, I'm going to shout out the title song or theme song for Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Because a lot of fantasy RPG music is all sounds the same. Uh, it all sounds <laughs> the same. And uh, for something to have, you have that distinct that sticks out. And it's it's great. It's it's great. I think that's one of the things that are that's if just mention another theme song. I think that's one of the great things about Halo's theme song. When you think of like, oh, like all, the opera, or whatever. Yeah, because you think yeah. of like all the first person shooters and all. It's all it all sounds it's all generic, and you have this this kind of choral, understated, soft song that doesn't really seem like it fits with a first person shooter about galactic spatial warfare. Uh, that you know, it really kind of sticks out and underscores everything. In a, in a really interesting way. I I agree. Like we, everyone knows me, I'm not the biggest fan of Halo, but yeah, that is a banger of a song. Yeah, and I also feel like that's because a lot of the music for for um, Destiny is kind of like that too. So that might be a Bungie thing more so, where they try to take more operatic, understated, soft toned music to their shooters compared to other ones. You might, might be, be right. Yeah. Well, that's all I got. That ends the topic. That means we've arrived at final thoughts. Final thoughts. We can offer a final thought about anything related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So who would like to give a final thought first? I'll go. All right. All right. So it's not related to this podcast. It's related to a previous level of this podcast. Okay. Okay. We were talking about leveling up our own stats right yes so i mean i did it but you did it you leveled up my music production because i had no idea what side chaining was and that actually solved an issue that i've been having yeah yeah, nice. yeah i was like why is the the bass just gets muddled into the sounds i'm putting on here yeah yeah and that's how you get rid of it it's side chaining yeah i had no idea yeah, it's it's that's your reaction to side chaining is my reaction to side chaining. It's it's a thing where I'm just da 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 da, da quote unquote unquote as the kids say dicking around, <laughs> and the music production thing, and all of a sudden it's it's I, I'm going doing research and I'm, I'm I'm watching Armin van Buren and I'm watching um, you remember uh you remember Nicky Romero? Yeah. So, Nicky, I'm, I'm pretty sure he did. I'm not, I'm not sure how big he is anymore, but I know that when I was listening to him, he was super big. But he did a video about how he produced his big track, To Lose. And I think in that video, he shows himself doing a side chain. He's like, and then I side chain. I forgot. I don't, I don't know where he's from. He's like, and then I right. side chain the, the thing and thing. And I'm like, what? Like, what is this? What is he saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? And and then I'm looking more into it and I'm trying to figure out, yeah, I do this and stuff. And I'm like, oh, OK, so I wonder if that's what I need to do in order to get it to where my I get that kind of whoosh effect with my bass and my you know, different stuff like that. And I did it. And then I just played a little bit of it. And I'm like, son of a that's it. OK, cool. And then I was like, whoa, this solved so many things. I could do so much. more. Yeah, now. that's that's one I, it's not the simplest thing, but it it's a, not. such a simple thing fixes a lot of issues. Yes, and it is a, I've. I was ahead. gonna say it's it's a it's an easy to understand equation once you kind of have a grasp of it, right? Yeah, as soon as you yeah. kind of understand what's going where, how and mm -hmm. why, and everything like that, sign chaining just like makes sense. But mm -hmm. like I've looked up, you know, like beginner tips for FL Studios and this and that and. Uh, not one of those videos has ever even mentioned side chaining. It's like, hey, now that you have the basics, here's some things that you might want to look into later. Mm -hmm. Some something. Yeah. There's nothing. I didn't hear of side chain until you said it. Yeah. And it's it's and it's it's great, right? Like it it also depends. Um, I'll I'll just extend. This is also my final thought. Just this, more of this stuff because I'm thinking because because okay. so <laughs> so because one of the things like you mentioned software and different things too. A lot of times I'm watching people and trying to figure out how to do side chaining. Uh, a lot of the people at the time were using something called Ableton. I'm not sure if you heard of Ableton. Yeah. I'm I'm sitting here and I'm like, look, man, I'm in high school. I ain't got time. To, I don't I don't have time to sit down and become a software engineer 
I'm just trying to make music, right? So mm-hmm. they're showing this is how you're doing stuff in Ableton. You, this here, that here, and you can tweak this and this. There's so much like control over it. And I'm kind of like, look, man, I just, just, I need something simpler, right? And so just constantly looking up things and just, just like trying to figure out what it was and then saying like, do I have access to tools that I can then do this with? And does it make sense? And how would I get this done? And then what, but what ends up happening is that you learn how to do it in a certain interface. So like for you it would be FL Studio. Right. That's going to be like your thing. So then, you know, if, if someone pops up and says like, so like my, we're talking like, okay, folks, just real quick. We're talking software or drop software names. If you know them, you know them. If you don't, you don't. So, like, I mostly do a lot of stuff in Logic Pro. That's, like, how I learned how to do a lot of things, including mm-hmm. side chaining. So, if you were like, hey, I learned to teach, show you how to side chain in FL Studio, I wouldn't know where to start. I could show you how to side chain in Logic Pro, like, no, like, no problem. But yeah, I wouldn't know that's so crazy where to too. do it, you know? Yeah, it's, it's weird. You know exactly it's like, what to do. Exactly what to do. You know where everything yeah, is yeah, at. If it's not the right software, you don't. You don't, right? So, that's, like, the thing of, but it's at least good to know the principle or the equation of it, right? So when you eventually learn that this plugin acts like a compressor in this software, and this is how you're able to input and output to it, then you're like, okay, I understand that. Now I understand how to put the math on where I need it to go in order to do the thing that I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. when, you know, that that works. But yeah, it's, it's really hard, especially if you're trying to look for something, how to do something, they're showing it in a different software, or they're just not really showing how they're doing it. Um, I I never learned how to do like side chaining from a half, from a software analog perspective. I remember watching videos of Armin Van Buren in a studio with I want to say eighty billion synthesizers or whatever heck stuff he's doing, and he's in there like some freaking like this guy looks like he's freaking like building Sega Genesis, and <laughs> and and he's doing something like and this is how I'm getting this sound or whatever. I'm like I don't I I don't know I I can't do it Armin. I'm not trying to figure all that out. I, I just I'm just trying to I do all you stuff. Armin. I yeah, can't, I can't do it. I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but yeah, man, that's, yeah, that's awesome. And then again, you get kind of get like that awesome feeling of, oh, I leveled up. So this it, is exactly. one thing that felt a little bit nebulous, a little bit complicated, but I understand it now. That's cool. Now I can, but, but I'm pretty sure what happened is that after that, you were like, I wonder how I can get it to do it with this. And then it didn't work. And now you're like, okay, oh, bleep. Now I got to figure out how I'm going to get this part to work with this. How do I right. get the timing right? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? To make it do what I want it to do. How do I get the right whoosh effect on it? Is my attack too sharp? Or I mean, is it too short or is it too long? What do I need to tweak? So then you learn something and then it introduces a whole new set of problems because you're thinking of something beyond the thing you were trying to figure out before. Right. So, right. I mean, eventually you keep hitting those level up moments and you're like, okay, this is awesome. You know? Mm-hmm. But uh, it's always great when you have a big level up moment. Side chaining for me was a big level up. It was a, that's a biggie. Yeah, I'm like, what? Like, what is this? That's how I get this to do this? Oh, that's cool. You know, I do now. Yeah, and then also like, just figure sometimes just figuring out what stuff is called. Like that's yeah, called like, side chaining. I, I didn't know that's what it was called. You know what I'm there's saying? There's no like vocab video. You know, no one, no right. one tells you what attack is. No one tells you what reverb is. No one tells you what this is and that is and the other. Like, there's so many knobs and buttons and mm-hmm. whatever, like uh, lines that you can move and twist. Like, no one explains what it does is you have to sit here and just hit every knob and line and twist and turn and see what it does to what you're making. Yep. And then even then, like you go to make a new song, you don't remember what you did. You don't. You, you probably don't. would if you knew the name for it. You don't. And me, I mean, just a little thing about me that I feel like may make perfect sense. If you know me is that when I would create sessions or create presets, when I named things, and I don't know why I did this, I never named them. I never really named them things. So I would it would say save this session, and I would just go on to my computer, and I would just do like s s s d f r r a d s s s r a s s save. <laughs> That's what I did. Now, why thinking, would you do that? Thinking back on it now, it makes no sense why I did that. No, I think I was just so mentally exhausted of what I was trying to do. And the thing that I'm just like, okay, I I don't have time for this. So I just do D S S R F F D S S R F F. And then the other one would be S R A A R A A R A A F. 
And then whenever I wanted to go back in, I'm like, man, what's that one? I don't want to work on S-D-R-F-F-F-A. I want to go work on Q-L-L-E-O-N-N-A. Let me click on that one and work on it. And that's how I would work on music. I can't put all together. I can't keep anything together. I don't know how my mind was doing that back in the day. I was going to say, I mean, if stuff. it worked for you, it works, obviously. It you barely know. worked. It Okay. Barely I think, worked. I actually think that I, I, I think I achieved in spite of that. I don't think it helped me at all. I think it was in spite of it. <laughs> in spite. Yeah. I work off spite. This is, yeah. this is why I did it. Yeah. That's funny. Oh, man. That's fun stuff. It is. Well, that brings us to the end of level 114. 114. The Awesome Players Podcast. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, subscribe, share to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. On the socials, we're on everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, yada, yada, yada. And then also, of course, we are on YouTube where we upload video versions of our podcasts. If you want to support the podcast, there's a couple of ways you can do that. One is we have a merch store. You can check out our Teespring store where we have different types of merch, phone cases, hats, shirts, um, jackets, hoodies, different stuff like that. Uh, and also we have a Patreon. We have three different tiers, a two, five, and seven dollar tier, each offering little bits of goodies and exclusive content. Again, we have, I think right now, um, both episodes of the Game Dev Tycoon. Let's play up there. Uh, have to get more episodes out, added to there, and they will be pretty soon. But that's up there exclusive to patrons. And then, of course, uh, we have other things you can get early looks early listens to the podcast before it goes live on other platforms so you can check us out there uh that is it for me david was there anything else you wanted to add please all right well thanks for tuning in and we will catch you on the next level